Hi guys, I'm at you with a video that is like amazing for me. Um, I just had this epiphany um, and it's super exciting because pretty much since October of 2016 and it is now February of 2017, I've been reflecting on this piece. <clears throat> okay, I believe that the key or the foundation for a healthy life, um, a healthy you, is a healing mind. A healing mind is the key. Um, I, as many people within the fitness industry, industry, sorry, try to attack health from a physical perspective. Um, so working out, eating clean, which depending on whatever diet looks different, <clears throat> and being positive. Like, so the positivity was as far as the mental, emotional, spiritual piece got. When it came to that and what I think is going on is that um and I'm speaking of myself in particular I can't speak to too much to other people's experience but I believe that you know at some point we encounter trauma everyone has trauma it looks different for each individual we encounter trauma um, we develop thoughts about the world around us and ourselves based on that sometimes um, and when we come into this health related lifestyle we feel like we're going to fix um, those problems by changing our physical selves and suddenly that we take the time to really go back sit down and um heal I, I mentioned in another video yesterday that i was trying to externally become this strong woman i wanted to be viewed as instead of going back and building up my my inner child my wounded child um into being that woman so i wanted to kind of shortcut and change my physical self change what i look like now when internally that girl is still there and you know she'll show out occasionally and that will deter um my goals at that point <laughs> and that's what many people do um i think it's normal um, it's a lot easier to hit the gym and eat healthier and put on fronts and facades than to really heal um, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It's easier. Um, and we don't have too much support in doing so. You know, in some communities, well, I'll say certain families. Let's keep this out of a community thing. Um, going to therapy and seeking spiritual advice is promoted. It's a norm. And in many, it isn't. So similar to working out, you know, many people don't um, or they do it for short periods of time throughout their lives, but it's not like a lifestyle thing long term. The difference between that is society pushes the fitness industry. Society, you, you see a gym on every corner. How often do you ride past a therapist's office and how often do you have discussions about it? How often um, are there promotions that you and your friends discuss? Like, oh, I'm thinking about going to this therapist, you know, right around the corner because they have this promotion going on. We don't have those type of dialogues. So when it comes to the gym um, and food, it's an everyday thing. And it's a, I guess it's a huge part of the American experience. You know, um, wanting to lose weight and eat healthier is a norm in everyday conversation but while talking about our problems isn't is normalized um suggesting and seeking um clinical support or spiritual support for it isn't that normative you know and so in hindsight that creates this demand for a hub of people to transform physically and you know their internal self never really catches up and with that comes sporadic depression anxiety um darkness i'll just say darkness um and i'm so happy to realize that because i remember when i was in treatment for my eating disorder um my therapist told me that it was almost as though i and becoming the person I thought I was when I came into her office. I'm like, what the heck? First, I didn't receive it too well. But what she was saying is when I came in, I thought I was so um, successful, inspirational, strong, independent. And in therapy, you know, layers were pulled back. And I saw that 
in areas, yeah, that was true. But as a whole, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't um, emotionally independent. Um, I had very codependent tendencies. Um, physically, I was strong. I mean, I could lift pretty heavy, but, you know, mentally, I didn't believe in myself. And that's a weakness. That is a huge weakness that will hold you back in almost every area of your life, if not um, dealt with. What else? Inspirational wise? Yeah, it's easy to be inspirational. <laughs> you know, everyone wants to lose weight. So if you do that, it's like this huge feat. Um, the most inspirational thing about me is the fact that I have improved who I am as a whole. And it's the internal work more than the external work. Um, but most people will never get to see that because most people aren't tapped into themselves in that way. Um, so, yeah. I was just happy to realize that that's it for me. Like that is the way I view the world that mentally healing is the key to this healthier lifestyle. If you are mentally um, healing, you're able to not cling to food as a companion. You're able to find healthier coping skills when you're in the face of anxiety or stress or, you know, you're able to understand when <clears throat> you're in a situation that may feel uncomfortable but your problem may not be that immediate situation. Um, so you're able to know your triggers, meaning you're able to use positive self-talk and help yourself through situations. Um, you hide behind fewer, if any, excuses. You take responsibility for your actions. You're able to love unconditionally, um, starting with yourself first. You're able to create healthy boundaries um, for yourself because you know what's best for yourself because you know yourself and you love yourself. Um, and losing weight does not do that for you. Um, losing or gaining weight, it changes your external piece. Um, you may get a lot of compliments and external validation for that. Um, but if you're someone that struggles with being lonely and being depressed, you'll still have loneliness and depression. If you're someone who has low self-esteem, you'll still have low self-esteem, even with those compliments. You'll still seek to date people that don't value you. You still won't fully value you, and you still won't know what your self-worth is. Um, and you'll be strong in the gym, but a lot of people um, can go to the gym and work out and still be in situations that prey on their weaknesses, if that makes sense. Um I have another video um, on here about the accountability partner relationship gone toxic. Um, <clears throat> and the point I'm trying to make with that is we might have an accountability partner relationship that builds upon our shame and our guilt and kind of creates um, the need for us to live in secret or eat in secret um, the things we truly desire. So this is becoming a long video. I'm sorry. I hope this was helpful. It is groundbreaking for me and my recovery to understand that a healing mind is a key to a healthier lifestyle. Um, and with this, I'm able to accept that my body doesn't look the way I want it to. It may never look the way I want it to. And that's okay because I love me and I am happier with the ability to enjoy life and work towards goals and believe in myself and love myself and attract people that are able to love me and respect my boundaries more so than just having this amazing body and a lot of compliments um, but feeling extremely lonely and undervalued by people <clears throat> so yay um be encouraged i would love to have dialogue about this um even if you don't agree but maybe not if you don't agree <laughs> so please comment be encouraged guys